Continuation of Chapter 2 Objections and Appeal Section 2.6 Appeal to the Federal High Court Hey, any person dissatisfied with a decision of the tribunal <coughs> constituted under this schedule may appeal against such decision on a point of law to the Federal High Court upon giving notice in writing to the secretary to the tribunal within 30 days after the date on which such decisions was given. B. A notice of appeal filed pursuant to paragraph A above shall set out all the grounds of law on which the appealant's case is based. C. C. If the service is dissatisfied with the decision of the tribunal, it may appeal against such decision to the Federal High Court on point of law by giving notice in writing as specified in A to the Secretary within 30 days after the date on which such decision was given. D. Upon receipt of a notice of a notice of appeal, the secretary to the tribunal shall cause the notice to be given to the chief registrar of the Federal High Court, along with all the exhibits tendered at the hearing before the tribunal. E. The chief judge of the Federal High Court may make rules providing for the procedures in respect of appeals made under this act and until such rules are made, the Federal High Court rules relating to high hearing of appeals shall apply to the hearing of an appeal under this act. Section 2.7 Right to Legal Representation A. A complainant or appellant, as the case may be, may either appeal in person or authorize one or more legal practitioners or any of its officers to represent him or its case before the tribunal. B. Every individual or company in a case before the tribunal shall be entitled to be represented at the hearing of an appeal by a solicitor or chartered accountant or advisor provided that if the person appointed by the taxpayer to be representative in any matter before the tribunal is unable for good cause to attend hearing thereof. The tribunal may adjourn the hearing for such reasonable time as it deems fit or admit the appeal to be made by some other person or by way of a written address. Powers and Procedures of Tribunal A. The tribunal may make rules regulating its procedures. B. The tribunal shall, for the purpose of discharging its functions under this schedule, have power to summon and enforce the attendance of any person and examine him on hope, require the discovery and production of documents, receive evidence on affidavits, call for the examination of witness or documents, review its decisions, dismiss an application for default or deciding matters ex parte, see aside, set aside any order or dismissal of any application for default or any order passed by its experts and do anything which in the option of the do anything which in the opinion of the tribunal is incidental or auxiliary to its function under this schedule c any proceeding before the tribunal shall be deemed to be a judicial proceeding and the tribunal shall be deemed to be a civil court for all purposes d 
The minister may make rules preceding the the minister may make rules prescribing the procedures to be followed in the conduct of appeals before the tribunal. E. However, each party of an appeal shall bear its own cost. Section 2.8. Further appeal to the court of appeal. An appeal against the decision of the Federal High Court at the instance of either party shall lie to the court of appeal. Chapter Review This chapter gives a comprehensive procedure for appeals to the Tax Appeal Tribunal, that is Appeal Commissioners, where the taxpayer and the revenue cannot mutually agree on the tax due. It discusses the composition and matters relating to appeal commissioners and other staff such as appointment, tenure of office and so on. The right of appeal of a taxpayer and the tax authority to seek further redress from the Federal High Court and Court of Appeal was also discussed. In addition, decision in addition, decided cases on different areas of dispute between taxpayers and tax officials were also discussed. In conclusion, good knowledge of the procedure for appeal to the Tax Appeal Tribunal and decided tax cases will improve tax practice in the country. Areas of conflict between tax practitioners and tax officials will be reduced considerably and this will be better for the country. Worked examples. One, your firm has been, question one, your firm has been the tax consultant to Nuruddin Limited for the past five years. The company makes up accounts to 31 December each year. You submitted the company's tax returns to the Federal Inland Revenue Services. Lagos on 24 June 2012. On 28 July 2012, the company forwarded to your office a BOJ assessment notice served on it on 27 July 2012 and dated 20 July 2012 with number LC slash 0005 slash 12. The tax computation which you submitted on behalf of your clients showed 1,150,000 Naira as tax payable, but the best of judgment assessment notice showed the total profit of 13,150,000 Naira and tax payable of 3,195,000 Naira. The accounts also contained information on Imezi's bank structure purchased during the 2010 accounting year. For the sum of 250 million naira, which developed some faults, and the sum of 10 million was spent in repairing it during 2011 accounting year. You did object to the BOJ and it was discharged. However, during the course of examination of the account, the tax inspector disallowed the expense on the tractor and added it back to the profits to form the basis of an additional assessment of 3 million naira. You duly objected to the additional assessment, but the tax inspector stood his ground and sent a final demand notice for the additional assessment. Required A. Prepare the specimen letter of objection to the Federal Inland Revenue Service Lagos on a BOJ assessment sent to the company. B. Identify the steps to be taken to seek redress in respect of the additional tax. Suggested solution to question 1. Letter head XYZ and Co. Chartered Accountant 3 Hainan Street, Ojodu, Lagos. Date 10th of August 2008. The Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Integrated Tax Office, Broad Street, Lagos. Dear Sir, Nuruddin Limited, Notice of Objection to BOJ Assessment. 
We write on behalf of our above named clients and wish to acknowledge the receipt of your notice of assessment as detailed below. Assessment notice number LC 0005-08. Date of assessment July 20, 2008. Date of delivery July 27, 2008. Period of assessment 1st of January 2008 to 31 of December 2008. Total profit 13,150,000 naira. Tax payable 3,195,000 naira. Right to object to the said assessment based on the following grounds. A. The best of judgment assessment of 3,195,000 is arbitrary, excessive, punitive, and without basis. B. The returns for the assessment year 2008 based on the account for the year ended 31 December 2007 were filed on 24 June 2008, which was within the due date. C. C. The tax computations, the duly filed self-assessment form together with the tax receipt were included in the returns, all of which have been disregarded by you. We therefore appeal to you to discharge the best of judgment assessment raised on our client and accept the tax return already sent to your office. While looking forward to receiving your data of discharge, we use this opportunity to thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Yours faithfully for XYZ and Co. Peter Saint for managing director. Solution to the B part of question one. Steps to resolve the additional tax. One, write to object to the final demand notice of the additional assessment raised. Two, in the objection letter, refer to the relevant section of CETA, section 20, that states that expenses on repairs and cost of spare parts for plants, tools, etc. are to be treated as allowable expenses for income tax purposes. 3. Schedule a reconciliation meeting with the tax inspector. 4. Ensure that you receive a response from the inspector in writing, communicating their position based on the reconciliation meeting you had with them. 5. After the meeting, if they refuse to discharge the demand notice, advise your client of your intention to proceed to the tax appeal tribunal, TAT. 6. File a notice of appeal with the Tax Appeal Tribunal and serve the tax office a copy of the notice of appeal. 7. Attend the appeal tribunal with relevant documents to prove that the expenses was only incurred by your client. 8. If the decision of the Tax Appeal Tribunal is not favorable, Advise your client to arrange for a legal advisor in order to commence court proceeding up to Supreme Court. Question 2. State any five powers of the Tax Appeal Tribunal. Solution to question 2. The Tax Appeal Tribunal has powers to 1. Summon and enforce the attendance of any person and examine him or her on oath. 2. Request for the discovery and production of documents. 3. Receive evidence on affidavits. 4. Call for the examination of witnesses or documents. 5. Review its decisions. 6. Dismiss an application for default or decide matters expert. 7. Set aside any order or dismissal of any application for default or any order passed by the expert. 8. Do anything within the opinion of the tribunal in incidental do anything which in the opinion of the tribunal is incidental 
or ancillary to its functions. Question 3. Tijani Olomowewe died of colon cancer recently. Until his death, he was the executive chairman of three companies, two sole enterprises, and one limited liability company. Wewe Blocks is a block making concern. Wewe Farms is all is into farming and into is into farming and poultry businesses. Wewe Farm Limited, that's P H A R M. Wewe Farm Limited, a limited liability company, is into importation and sale of medical drugs. The block making industry as well as the farming or poultry businesses were located in his village of Abulei 4 while the pharmaceutical company was located in Lagos. Chivolomowewe shuttled between Abulei 4 and Lagos to personally supervise activities of the, diff of the three companies. Chivolomowewe could not trust anybody as he believed that everybody was out to steal his money. There was business misfortune of recent. Drugs worth 43 million imported by the company were confiscated and burnt by National Agency for Food, Drugs, Administration and Control. The reasons given were that the drugs carried expired dates and were found to be fake as well. Chivolo Mowewe contested the primary election into the House of Assembly and lost woefully. He could not recover a penny from the 13.5 million naira spent on the election. The poultry section of the agri business was not also spared by the business reverse, reverses. The drug administered on the day old cheek were found to be fake and 3,000 births were lost in the process. The management of Wewe Farm Limited received the data from the Integrated Tax Office of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Lagos, rejecting the tax returns filed. Ms. Shade Olomowewe is the first daughter of Chief Olomowewe. She holds a B.S.C. degree in microbiology and a diploma in financial management from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ife. She is planning to travel out of the country for further studies. She sat alone in her father's sitting room, lost in thought. One, she knew that the recent business misfortune of her father might have been responsible for his sudden death. At the family meeting held immediately after the death of Chief Olomowewe, it was unanimously agreed that Shade should take over as chairman of the business concerns. In preparation for a new role, Shade attended a seminar at Center for Management Development, Lagos. An extract of a paper presented to Shade is as follows. From the commercial standpoint, mergers and acquisitions are rescue devices employed very often to avert failures, to build sustainable competitive position, and to assure growth and business organization to assure growth of business organizations through more efficient utilization of existing assets. Again, tax considerations have occasionally provided the motive for mergers and takeovers. Ms. Shade Olomowewe, bubbling with fresh ideas as a result of the seminar she attended called an emergency meeting of the management of the company to initiate, to intimate them of a vision and dream for the company. She lectured the meeting on the need to radically redesign the whole operations through discarding old structures and procedures and inventing new ways of accomplishing tasks and processes. The following decisions were taken at the meeting. A to appoint James Fowler and Co., a firm of 
tax practitioners to take up the tax appeal with the Federal Inland Revenue Service. B. To appoint Biado and company to advise the company on the restructuring and the engineering of every aspect of the business management board, business practices, business processes, etc. C. To sell the building owned by Wewe Farm Limited in order to raise funds and D. To consider the proposal for acquisition of an airline. The building which was initially built at a cost of 100 million in 2003 was sold for 85 million naira only. The cost of rectifying certain defects in the building and, va and the valuation fee was 2 million. Shade had received a call from a friend, Nathaniel, a 31 year old Cameroonian born lawyer who had founded Sky Airlines, which was currently facing financial difficulties. Nathaniel was seeking additional financing to get the airline airborne again. This was the proposal referred to Biado and Company for professional advice. Biado and Company in their report highlighted the dangers in entering the airline business. These include the high capital needed, lack of previous experience, and the highly seasonal nature of the business. The case of a similar airline that had been pushed into bankruptcy by high debts, currency fluctuations, and competition from other established foreign airlines was analyzed in the report. Biado and company recommended the proposal only on the condition of being able to raise appropriate finance and experienced personnel. Despite all these reservations and obstacles, Ms. Shade Olomowewe invested in the business and got Wewe Day Airlines registered in Lagos with a paid up capital of 750 million naira and acquired Sky Airline. Where were the airlines low fare began to attract customers? The profit and loss account of Where were the airlines, a company incorporated in Lagos, confirmed the good vision and management acumen of Miss Shade Oloma Wewe. She had become a role model for the youth both in Nigeria and Cameroon on how to successfully run a business. The financial results in respect of the year ended 31 December 2008 as follows. Income from passengers freight out of Nigeria 600 million naira. Income from passengers freight into Nigeria 2 billion naira. Income from passengers freight on other routes 7.2 billion naira, totally 9.8 billion naira. Deduct administrative expenses 3.24 billion naira. Marketing expenses 360 million naira. Financial expenses 680 million naira. Depreciation 1 billion 176 million naira. Total expenses deducted is 5 million <coughs> 456 million naira. So the net profit is 4 million 344 million naira. The other operating expenses of 191.5 million naira were disallowed. A problem arose again in respect of where we farm. Limited when the tax authority rejected its tax return for 2009 assessment year. The Federal Inland Revenue Service has disallowed the 13.5 million spent on political campaign and demanded for additional tax payment of 1 million and 50,000 naira. Required with the rejection of the tax returns filed by Wewe Farm Limited, enumerate the procedures to be followed in appealing against the stand of FIRS.
Solution to question 3. Contents of notice of appeal. Any company which is aggrieved by an assessment made upon it and has failed to agree with the board may appeal against the assessment to the appoint to the appeal commissioners upon giving notice in writing to the board within 30 days after the date of service upon such company of notice of the refusal of the board to amend the assessment as desired. The notice of appeal should state the following A. The official number of the assessment and the year. B. The amount of tax charged by such assessment. C. The amount of total profit upon which tax is charged. D. The date upon which the appellant was served with notice of refusal by the board to amend the assessment. E. The precise grounds of appeal land F. An address of service of any notice and document. Question 4. What are the tax implications of effecting major through liquidation and selling or transferring one company business entity to another corporate body for cash or any other consideration under the provision of Kama and Sita? Solution. The tax implication of mergers and acquisition are A. Income taxes may have to be paid by the shareholders of the transfer of company. B. Additional taxes may result from the application of cessation provision. C. The tax liabilities of the liquidating or transfer or company is the first charge even before any creditor can be paid. D. Capital gain tax may be due on chargeable gains accruing to the transfer of company. E. Registration fee and stand duty may be paid to legalize the scheme and this may be disallowed for tax purposes. That's the end of chapter 2. Thank you.